apparently you're an academic or very academically inclined. So what I'm trying to do in this introductory video is to convince you it's worth your while to check out the Jesus Code and the Crucifixion Code with an open mind. Firstly, I do have an academic background. I had a PhD in philosophy of science by the time I was 26. And as an undergraduate, I studied both philosophy and history. And in fact, I was planning to do a double major with history and philosophy, but I sort of lost interest in history at the time. So why should you take this guy seriously? He's not getting published in you know, academic journals. He's not even trying to get published in academic journals. He hasn't done biblical studies. He doesn't read Coin Greek. Well, sometimes to get a fresh perspective, you have to come from the outside. And here's the one thing I will say to you. Firstly, I have done a lot of research and I've researched the translations, for instance. Now, why, why was metanoia ever translated as repent? And why wasn't this a big issue earlier than it has been? Metanoia, repent? Are you kidding me? It's been described as a linguistic and theological catastrophe, and doubtlessly it is. Right, metanoia, you know, higher level of thinking, raise your awareness. Or as we tend to say nowadays, when somebody is going around in a daze and not paying attention, repent. No, we don't say that, do we? We say, wake up. I think that's probably the best modern translation of metanoia. Wake up. Wake up. The kingdom of God is at hand. Another translation that really, really, really bugs me is in the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Are you serious? Epiosius, translated as daily. Even St. Jerome, you know, superstantialum at one place, he, above substance, right? Epiosis, epi, above, above. Osius, being, higher being. Give us today our higher being. Now, here's the one thing I will say to you. Whatever you think about my academic credentials, whatever you think about the book, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you will understand mysticism better when you've read these two books, The Inner Path, right? The path that Meister Eckhart and St. Avila and Plotinus and Mansur al halaj trod. You will definitely understand that better through having read these books. And that is really, in a sense, what I bring to bear, this background in inner transformation. Because the argument of the Jesus Code is that Jesus, the historical Jesus, was not preaching, I am the only begotten Son of God, and believe in me and obey the Ten Commandments and you'll go to heaven. He was preaching the path of inner transformation. He was preaching what John the Baptist had taught him, that through inner transformation, you can get to baptism by the Holy Spirit. And that enters your soul into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Now, you understand that this is a radically different idea to what's in the normal, now more or less received view of Jesus, that he was a failed preacher, an apocalyptic coming kingdom of God that would be established on earth. This book, in my opinion, demolishes that idea. Why? Because it explains much more than that received academic idea. It explains every one of the parables. It explains the true meaning of the Beatitudes. It explains the real purpose behind the Lord's Prayer. I should I explain it, but it, Jesus already explains it in the Gospel of Luke. After he teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer, he goes on to say, you know, you who are hopeless and you still give things to children, they beg for you. How much more will the Lord, the God, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for it? The 
the Lord's Prayer is a plea for baptism by the Holy Spirit, for epiosius, for higher being. So, you know, if nothing else, you can read the book and set out to demolish it. But here's the thing. In science, the theory that gets up is the one that explains the most. And my argument that Jesus was a mystic teaching the path of inner transformation, that explains way more than the received academic idea that Jesus was a failed preacher of a forthcoming apocalypse. This part of his preaching, the stuff about the apocalypse, that's dealt with in the second book, The Crucifixion Code. So I don't want to go into everything that's in the two books, obviously, but I just really encourage you to not dismiss them just because I don't have an academic post, because I haven't done a degree in Coin Greek, for instance. Here's my question to you. Yes, I don't read Coin Greek, but I have been able to obviously read discussions of translations. And here's the question. Do you read and understand mysticism? After you read these books, you will. <laughs>